Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History and welcome back to Egypt. And I am coming to you from the legendary Old Cataract Hotel in Aswan. And I think it might just be the most beautiful hotel in the world. It's certainly the most beautiful that I've ever stayed at. We stayed there for the last three days of our trip to Egypt and this will be the last video in the series our vintage Egyptian adventure after this normal programming will <laughs> proceed and with a few surprises as well including a couple of new series that I'm launching that I'm really excited about and hope that you will be too anyway back to the old cataract you are going to love this hotel um, what I've done for you here is a walk through, a walk around, and a highlight of some very special moments. I think you'll enjoy it. So join me at the legendary Old Cataract Hotel, which was opened in 1899 as part of the Thomas Cook Hotel range that stretched down the Nile. And this was the jewel in its crown. And we arrived there on the Nile by water, just as they did in the 1900s, 1920s, 1930s. We left the SS Sudan, which was moored further down the Nile, and we traveled up by a little motorboat to arrive at the hotel. Well, take a look. It's our last view for now of the SS Sudan. It was a good home for five nights and six days. And now we travel just for a few minutes upriver to the legendary old cataract hotel for the last little bit of our vacation. Three days there. And I will film as we approach it from the water, which is how people approached it in the golden age of Thomas Cook and Egyptian travel. Elephantine Island, which has ancient, ancient ruins upon it. And then swing around, and there you have it. The Sofitel Legend Old Cataract Hotel. And we are pulling up in this lovely little motorboat outside. We are just pulling in, as so many people did over the past 100, 150 years. <laughs> so then you come through the door. And this really is just so beautiful, this kind of Moorish architecture and through here is the library, with lovely couches, coffee table books, things such as that, and wonderful prints and sketches on the walls that really uh, evoke the era of Thomas Cook and the great travelers to Egypt. Look at that, isn't that pretty? It's local flowers. I know, I can't remember who, but one of you said, oh Amanda, can you get some flora and fauna? So there's some for you there. It's rather beautiful. Also rather beautiful are the ceilings. This Art Nouveau border. These Moorish arches again. And then you walk out here. Can you hear the music? There's live musicians on the terrace. I'll just show you out there. That's one of the restaurants, but not the restaurant we're eating out tonight. And then, going over here and into the bar, which is 
fantastic. Huge paintings from the Orientalist art movement of the 19th century, these ones. There is the bar, which is gorgeous. And now we are going out onto the terrace with this incredible view. breakfast and look how long these corridors are at the old cataract but they're beautiful the whole hotel is designed along sort of moorish lines and full of antique pieces I don't know if all of them are original to the hotel that opened in 1899 or if they're more recent editions or have been added over the past hundred and something years but either way you really do get a sense of how the old cataract must have been and looked in that first wave of travel to Egypt the old cataract hotel as I'm sure I've already mentioned was a Thomas Cook hotel and so was the SS Sudan. That was a Thomas Cook vessel. He really kind of um, had it all locked down. He had uh, Thomas Cook and Sons sort of had a monopoly on Egyptian travel. Here is the old elevator, a little bit rickety. And as we're only on the first floor, I'm taking the stairs to breakfast. I already did something of a walkthrough, but this is a walkthrough from the bedroom area, the guest room area of the old cataract. And oh my goodness, just take a look at this mirror here. Absolutely stunning. And then we go through here back into this incredible lobby. It's so beautiful. And then I'm going to walk out onto the terrace. You can have breakfast or dinner or whatever, lunch, indoors there. Or in fact, indoors in the bar, which you can see there. But nobody does that. Not when you can have your meals or drinks or coffees out here on the terrace restaurant with this <laughs> incredible view of the River Nile with all the boats and felucas. You can see there's so much seating area, area everywhere. There's always a place to sit. You can even go sit down by the pool over there. And you can see some people are sitting over there having their breakfast. As I think I mentioned before, this additional building, which was built in the early 1960s, is an annex to the hotel. And apparently the rooms there are very, very nice. And there we have it. Now I'm going to do a walkthrough of the breakfast buffet. So you go across the terrace here, again with these incredible views this time down to the pool there is an egg station bonjour we had eggs benedict from the egg station yesterday and it was amazing bonjour and then here is the buffet let's see what's going on well, you can see there are a ton of pastries absolute ton of pastries of course there's all kinds of cereals dried fruit cheeses meats salads fruit juices 
fruit. More exotic fruits and yogurts, things like that. And then this is really pretty. Tajines filled with traditional Egyptian breakfast foods. Absolutely gorgeous. These fabulous lamps. Again, very much in that Al Andalus style. And check that out. This place is gorgeous. I've just noticed this incredible mural here. Absolutely delightful. So now we're walking into the spa. We're going to have a couple's massage. I came here yesterday for a, a swim in the indoor pool and this is so beautiful. It's in the new building. We're in the original palace building they call it. This is the a new very attractive looking little tower building they have adjacent with the gym and a lot of facilities including this gorgeous spa and all access indoor pool and we are going in hello hello again very well hello again hi how are you i'm just filming for my youtube <laughs> and we go through here the smell i can't tell you how beautiful the smell is and over there is the gym but i have never been to a gym in my life as you know I'm not proud of that fact so i haven't been in there but look at this pool. And I'm going to stop talking now. Because I want you to get a sense of the calm here. Okay, I'll talk a bit. It's sort of um, Moroccan in style sort of Moorish, Al Andalusian style. And the water where I swam yesterday is scented with mint. It's so beautiful. And now I'm going for my massage. Every afternoon, the Old Cataract Hotel gives a tour of a very famous suite unless somebody is staying there, in which case they can't. And it is a tour of the suite of rooms occupied by one of its most famous residents, Agatha Christie. Let me show you around. Because of course it was in this suite of rooms that Agatha Christie wrote Death on the Nile. Some of the fixtures and fittings were original, like in this room here, but I thought it was rather a shame that other rooms, like her bedroom and bathroom, had been rather modernized. I would have much preferred to have everything in period. But it was the view from her balcony that really made that suite of rooms so special. And one of my most special moments was this, sitting in the pool of the old Cataract Hotel with Rupert, Rupert reading Death on the Nile to me aloud as we looked up at the balcony where Agatha Christie sat and wrote it. What an experience. And speaking of the pool at the old cataract, want to see some swimming? I think there are very few places in the world where you can go for a swim. I'm actually swimming with one arm holding my camera. I'm going to swim over here and show you there's a view from the pool. Ah, get to the side. Where well, you can see ancient Egyptian ruins. Look down, see the Nile, see the Aga Khan's citadel over there on the hill. Sort of his vacation home, I guess. Palm trees, it's beautiful. And then spin around. And there is the grand lady herself, the old cataract hotel. And I will spin around some more, do a bit more swimming for you. The ultimate swimming history. And 
and this is the view from our balcony of our room at the old Cataract Hotel. That building you see across the garden with the sort of uh, mosque-like dome and that hexagonal shape is the posh restaurant here, the 1902, where we are having dinner tonight um, and being comped by Voyager du Monde. Absolutely marvellous, marvellous company, I highly recommend them. And over there is the iconic, I keep using that word, but it is, front entrance to the old cataract if you're not coming by boat. I'll see if I can zoom in for you. There it is, the old cataract. So this is rather lovely, isn't it? Now I've got to go put some makeup on. one of the most beautiful restaurants I've ever been to. Look up there. Arch, oh, look up there. It's beautiful. And they're doing an Andrew Lloyd Webber medley. And who doesn't like that, really? Who doesn't like that? People are going to think you're joking when you say that, but you mean it. I actually mean that. Love Andrew Lloyd Webber. What an experience that was. Anyway, some of you have asked me, Amanda, what did you buy in Egypt? Well, you know what? I didn't buy that much. I'm not very good at souks or bazaars. I'm, I'm not good in crowds. But I did pick up exactly what I intended to. I got some Egyptian oud oil for my two best girlfriends. Before I set off, I was fixated with the idea of buying an alabaster camel, which I did, and which Beau immediately fell in love with. And Rupert bought me, as a little present, a gold scarab for my charm bracelet. Well, the ancient Egyptian side of things was fantastic. The Nile trip was fantastic. The old Winter Palace and the cataract were wonderful, but you know when you travel anywhere, it's the people who make a vacation, isn't it? And in the case of our trip to Egypt, it really was the people who made it so special. From our new friends we met on the cruise, who also stayed at the old cataract with us, to the people of Egypt, who were so warm and so patient with all of us idiot tourists running around, myself the biggest idiot of all. But the person who really made my dream trip to Egypt so very special was the man who made it happen, my husband Rupert. And there he is outside of Tutankhamun's tomb. I know I don't often show pictures of Rupert. He's rather camera shy. He's sort of like the Bigfoot of Savile Row. So this is a collector's item. If it hadn't been for him, none of this would have happened. And what a wonderful traveling companion he was. The trip to Egypt was really the best thing I've ever done in my life. It is truly one of my life's high points. I think about it every day, and although I may have left Egypt, Egypt will never leave me. I'll be back when regular programming resumes later in the week with some big news coming up, some new series that I'm excited about that I mentioned earlier, until then, it has been so much fun and such a, a pleasure and privilege to share this trip with all of you. Thank you for your lovely enthusiasm, comments on the Facebook group and emails. I'll be back very soon. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>